I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. The AOLIS satellite is currently undergoing tests and checks ahead of its launch later this summer from Kourou in French Guiana. The satellite is set to be the first space mission to acquire profiles of the wind on a global scale, which will improve weather forecasting and help us better understand climate variability. Before the satellite was shipped to Kourou, we got a chance to see it in the clean room at Airbus Defence and Space in Toulouse and speak with mission scientist Anna Greta Strome about wind and how Aeolus will measure it. Let's take a look. Aeolus is going to be looking at winds. Where do winds come from? So winds are created from uh, temperature differences. So basically, uh, if you have one warm air, it's lighter than cold air, so it will start to rise. That creates pressure difference between two areas, and that's where the winds are coming from. The winds will start to transport the air from the warm area to the cold area, and back again in order to compensate for this pressure difference. And this is what you see in your house at home in winter time, you switch on your heating and you start to get the warm air moving around in your room. And uh, this is a little bit how it works on Earth as well. On Earth, uh, the equator is heated more than the poles. So what you get is the warm air at the equator rising and moving towards the pole and back. And in addition to that, because the Earth is spinning, you actually get a, a turning of the, uh, of the winds going north-south towards east-west, and that's where the, the bigger wind systems are coming from, the trade winds that, we, uh, that the boats used to use in the old days to get from continent to continent, the jet stream that the airplanes are using when they uh, travel to go faster. And that's really this uh, movement of the air uh, due to the temperature differences. Also, the winds are further uh, changed by uh, differences on the surface. For instance, the difference in temperature between an ocean and land. Uh, mountains are modulating the winds. You get waves. And this is where you get the creation of low pressures and high pressures. Uh, valley winds, sea breeze. It's coming from this further modulation. So we need to understand winds in order to understand weather. Exactly, because the winds is connecting all the areas together. It's transporting air from one place to the next. And it's also what you feel on ground, which will, uh, which will actually um, feed into the storms uh, and, and the weather. So it's really important for that. So today, how are we measuring winds? What do we use right now? So what we're using today is uh, weather balloons that are launched from uh, weather centers uh, twice a day and also sometimes on ships. We also have wind measurements on aircraft which are traveling from one city to the next. Uh, they're measuring that. Also satellites are measuring winds. Uh, they can derive the winds from temperature measurements. So as I said before, temperature differences will make the air move and hence you can derive wind information from these satellite temperature measurements. But they're only describing the winds on large scale. So in order to understand the winds, you need to measure it directly. That's done also by satellites uh, measuring cloud motion. So you can track how the clouds are moving in the atmosphere. And in this way, you can derive what the wind is in this place. And also there are satellite measurements that are measuring the winds and the ocean surface. So by looking at the waves and wave features, uh, you can uh, derive how strong wind it is just to knowing how, the, how big the waves are basically. Now this is important not only for short term for weather, but also long term for climate. It's uh, very important because uh, the climate, uh, a climate model is a bit like a weather model. It's predicting how the weather is changing into the future, not only for three days or five days like a forecast model does, but it's predicting how the weather is changing for years to come. So in order to do that, you need to know the interaction between wind, temperature and pressure, and also humidity in, for cloud formation. So these are the basic things to measure in order to be able to model and to forecast. Now, can you explain in layman's terms, how will Aeolus do this? So Aeolus uh, is actually uh, having its uh, own sun on board in the sense it's sending out laser light into the atmosphere and this uh, laser light uh, is then scattered back from uh, air molecules and particles in the atmosphere. As it is moving back to the satellites again, 
the, uh, the color of the light is slightly changing. This is the same effect as you see from an ambulance passing. If an ambulance is coming towards you, the sound waves will get compressed because it moves towards you. It has a high sound when it moves from you. The, uh, the waves from the sound will get stretched and you get a, 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 um, a lower sound. And the same happens to the light which is sent out by the satellite. The movement of the air molecules or the particles in its path will actually stretch or compress the light wave and you get a different color coming back to the instrument. So we measure uh, the back reflection of the air and the particles at different ranges from the instrument and from this you can actually measure the winds at different altitudes through the atmosphere from the surface up to the stratosphere. So up to about 30 kilometers? About 30 kilometers is the top level that we will be able to measure and uh, this is then detected again on the other side of the uh, instrument. That's great and then it's beamed down to earth? Yes. And then who's using it? So uh, the users for this is uh, mainly weather centers uh, we are processing these measurements of the light coming back from the atmosphere into a, a wind profile observation, so wind measurements in the atmosphere. This is done within three hours and then it's sent straight to weather centers all over the world for them to pick it up and use it in their forecast models. Because the forecast model needs to use all the observations available of the atmosphere in order to make a forecast and AELUS will contribute to this. Also, there will be scientific users who wants to learn more about winds, the relationship between wind and temperature and pressure, and also climate modelers in order to make these long forecasts into the years to come. They need to understand how the wind is working and they will pick up our data too and use them. And as a scientist, what are you most looking forward to from AOLIS? So I'm really looking forward to the first light coming back to the instrument and being sent down to Earth and analyzed and that we will see what the instrument really can do. And I'm looking very much forward to the first wind observations uh, and, and these being used by the weather forecast models. Well, Anna Greta, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space, about our planet, or about the Aeolus satellite, you can visit our website at www.esat.int.